Welcome to the beautiful city of Marina del Rey. We are here at the C-Suite Network Conference and fortunate enough to be speaking with Jeff Tomlin, who is the VP of Marketing as well as co-founder of Vendesta. That's Jeff, right. welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. It's thanks great to be here. Thanks for making it. You know, the first question I think apropos to the conference that we are um, joined here today with is from a, from a C-Suite perspective, what are the biggest challenges you see marketers facing um, in the world they live in today? Well, I think, uh, I think today is uh, trying to get the attention of people that they want to get the attention of. Uh, I think that one of the things that have, has come uh, to be with the Internet now, that there's so much media out there and there's so many media channels. People are so time-starved. Uh, it's trying to reach the right people that you want to reach at the right time and getting their attention. And so I think that that is the biggest challenge marketers and it's the biggest challenge of people in our space right now and we deal in the, in the local media space. So agencies and media companies that we work with that are trying to sell solutions and, and uh, um, advertising uh, to local businesses um, are struggling in an increasingly competitive market with people that are increasingly busy yep. and overwhelmed with media and so the challenge to them is to, is to get through to them. So let me ask you this, you, you mentioned the word attention several times in that and I think that's um very apropos to the world we live in today. At the nucleus of that, what is key to getting folks' attention? What, what, what do all the folks that do it well have in common? Um, I, I think it's providing value up front. And uh, you know, we, we say that uh, local is something that is, is um, sold and not bought. So typically, um, SMBs, uh, small local media, uh, or small medium businesses, are not typically going out and buying solutions themselves and doing it DIY. Um, they have to be sold a solution. But uh, on the other hand, um, uh, traditional sales techniques don't, aren't uh, really as effective today as, as they used to be. Yep. And, uh, Why is that? And, and, well, a uh, whole bunch of reasons. With a, lar a bunch of, lar of the larger media companies, their, their sales model is broken. Um, the, the compensation model no longer fits. People can't jump in their cars and drive out to local businesses and sell them a solution. Um, because uh, it, it's not cost effective anymore um, and so more and more people are, are streamlining their sales organizations um, and doing more telesales and they're being more prescriptive about how they go about selling. Uh, they don't sell sort of one-size-fits-all solution. Um, they have to listen to a business, understand what their biggest challenges are and, uh, and put together some sort of uh, prescriptive package and engage in consultative selling. How do you scale that? Well, uh, I think you have, to, you have to be smart about it. So number one, you have to profile the businesses that you're uh, approaching. Yep. And you can do that with technology ahead of time. Um, you can provide them information and help educate them ahead of time um, and, uh, and provide value ahead of the sale. And once you do that, I think you find that people are much more receptive. The sales cycles can be a lot quicker. And, uh, and I'll give you an, a, a direct example of Please. that. And so uh, a lot of uh, people that we would be dealing with would be going and making cold calls on businesses and they'd go in with a binder like this of different media solutions that they could offer and drop it down and start flipping pages. And that was the old days. And nowadays, um, if we want to think about um, prescriptive selling and consultative selling and provide value up front, um, we can go out and we can find a whole bunch of information about a business um, that they don't even necessarily know themselves. Um, and s start to educate them and inform them about what their current digital footprint looks like, what their profile looks like, show them some things that they might not know about the, their online listings, their online reviews, what the general sentiment about the business is, show them how they can use that information to improve their business. And, uh, so give first, a little reciprocity before you ask them for Give the first, yeah. and give them something that they can, they can touch and they can play around with that adds value um, ahead of time, and, uh, and then take the relationship from there. Gaining trust is a big part of that. Um, and, uh, and when people do that, uh, we're finding compressed sales cycles and we're finding uh, much higher conversion rates on, uh, on sales calls. Because you're giving them something of value, you're building trust, and then it's an easier conversation. Much easier. No, that's yeah. fantastic. And actually, you know, in, in terms of how, how you just described it, maybe it's a great time to talk about a little about the technology you provide and, and how that actually helps to enable those conversations and that trust building, if you will. Yeah, to, so to cl clarify what, what we've been doing over the last, since 2011, Vendasta's been providing reputation, presence, and social media management platforms to local businesses. 
Um, so it helps them understand what people are saying about them online. It helps them understand where they're listed and helps them engage in social. But we don't sell directly to SMBs, uh, uh, the local businesses. We sell through channel partners sure. and uh, white label our platform. And so we deal with about 400 media companies and large digital agencies, small ones as well, um, uh, that service oh, about 200,000 local businesses right now. Um, and what we've found over the past year is that that technology that we use to provide uh, uh, local businesses relevant, timely information about what people are saying about them is a great marketing tool. And so we've developed a mar uh, marketing automation and sales transformation system for media companies. Um, and uh, that starts off by providing a, a very uh, precise um, marketing assessment, digital marketing assessment for a local business. And we can send that out to them, and then we can follow it up with relevant, valuable information on behalf of our, our channel partners. Um, and then as the businesses engage in that and show interest in it, uh, we surface that to sales teams so that they can focus their, their sales efforts on the people that, um, number one, have a need, and number two, that are showing interest. Yeah, I love it. I mean, and you just very clearly articulated the, the alignment between sales and marketing, which is a, is a very tough thing to do these days, especially in the roles that we keep. Yeah. Um, and, and you also address you know, a lot of the common uh, um, questions that I actually typically ask around the, co the company buying journey, how that's changed over time and, and moving from a sales first mentality to reciprocity and give first and provide value, which has been fantastic. Yeah. In terms of better understanding what to give um, what, and, and, and how successful your approach to actually closing new business on behalf of these larger companies. Um, what sorts of data do you look at? Um, what's important to you, and, and how do you use that in an effective way? Um, well, specifically for our solution, uh, we take a look at uh, the needs of a, of a local business, and, uh, and we see uh, what things are working for them online. First off, what data we can find out there, and uh, what things um, they're doing well at, what things that they're doing poorly at, and then we look for opportunities. You know, one, one thing that we found uh, around uh, buying and, and selling right now is that some things have changed in, in local and some things have remained uh, surprisingly the same as they always have been. So some things that have changed is that uh, consumers are, are much more savvy than they used to be. You can do a lot more research online. People that go in and buy from a, a local business um, have, uh, typically have the intent to buy uh, as they go into a, a, a business. They've done a lot of research online. On the other hand, we, we look at a lot of people um, can't be forced to buy necessarily. They buy when they're ready, typically. Mm -hmm. And the best analogy that I can, I can make is uh, the co-founder of our company and our, our CEO um, used to own a computer retail operation. And uh, he used to pay himself, this was back in the late 80s, he was paying himself $40,000 a year. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he was spending $20,000 a week on advertising, and that would get him two full-page ads in, in a local newspaper. Oh, yeah. And so you could imagine the heartburn that he would get when uh, he would, uh, he would fork, fork out that money every single week. And so he would ask everyone that he knew, did you see my ad, did you see my ad? And he'd get a lot of no's. But when he did get a yes, the conversation went like this, yes, I did see your ad, um, I'm looking for a computer. And, uh, or I need to upgrade my computer. So they've already, got, they've already made a decision in the back of their mind that they, they, they need something, they're looking for something, and those are the people that see the advertising and, uh, that's out there right now. And that remains surprisingly um, uh, uh, the, the, the same. And so back to your question about how we, how we use data, some of the things that we'll look at with our marketing automation system are what kinds of things can we find and the digital footprint of a business that indicate that maybe that they're already looking for a solution. And so, um, you know, one example of that might be if, uh, if a business has recently re received a really bad review online and mm -hmm. maybe they've engaged with that review. You know, maybe they, th th it's more likely that that type of business is having an aha moment that uh, I have to pay more attention to the reviews that are coming online or I, I need help responding to these. Interesting, because yeah. you're when you describe that, Jeff, you, you, you're describing that from a perspective of outside of data that you actually have in the engagement of, of your website, if you will. Yeah. You're actually looking outside to the outside world to say what's actually happening that may cause them to to need our solution, which right. is interesting. A lot of folks aren't are thinking that way because they're thinking about the data they have and how they can affect a, you know accelerate a, 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 the velocity in a pipeline. 
But this is a unique, a unique, interesting approach. Right, and we we, we got to there by um, uh, sitting back in the last year and saying, you know, it, how can we create this? We wanted to create a 10x change in our digital trajectory. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a white label provider, the only that, uh, the only way that we can do that is to create a 10x change in the sales velocity of our channel partners. And so when we we focused on that. We, we, we we're thinking constantly about how can we make sales organizations more efficient, um, and marketing or, organizations. I love it. That's fantastic. So you know, from a you know a VP perspective, uh, I always like to ask this question: What reports are most important to you on a, a monthly or quarterly basis? What are you absolutely honed in on? And you can't wait to get your hands on. No, uh, that's that you're putting me on the spot. It's a terrible <laughs> question because I. I you know, we we just in, uh, invested in uh, um, a team in our company called BizOps. Okay. And so, typically, when we would hire a developer, we would just we'd throw them into product teams, and because we always need more product, more product, and uh, there's never enough product developers. And so, we've cut this team off. There's a couple of really bright guys that are just building internal KPIs, and. Uh, so now we have our own digital dashboard. We can log in to our, our KPIs, and we get a lot of them that are emailed to us all of the time. Um, and uh, the more reports that I get, the more that I want. And now uh, I've got to the point where they keep building different, more and more reports from our internal systems, all the way from our billing systems <laughs> to our client usage systems. What's valuable, that, though? What do you that, need to have? That uh, I love them all, and I stare at them all day long. <laughs> but uh, the, the ones that I like the most are, are ones that help me understand uh, where to place my efforts and where's the best use of my money. Okay. Is there a particular okay. one that you feel like is, is delivers the most insights around that? that? Um, yeah, probably my... my the, the report that indicates conversion rates from my own marketing automation system. Okay. And so if you can take a look at your entire funnel, and this is definitely the most important report to me, I can see where all of my inbound business is coming from. And uh, as they go through this, the, uh, the, the funnel in my system, which ones are, are turning into closed business, where did they originally uh, originate from? And I'm going to spend more money and time and effort on so let me push you on that. Is it, a, is it a matter of where they originated from, or is it a matter of the path they took to actually become a potential client? Um, it, it, it's a little bit of both. Okay. It, it, it's definitely a bit of both, but I think that the, the most important part is understanding the profile of that person. Yep. And then definitely the, the, the channel makes a big difference. Yep. Where, where they originally, did they come from a piece of content, did they come from a piece of advertising? Mm -hmm. Some things are just converting more. And, and when you look at those things, different activities take a lot more of your time. Uh, you know, it's more time developing content than it is um, uh, focusing on your paid search sure. and, and so forth. So. And let me ask you this. Um, a lot of folks struggle in the B2B world. I mean, you're, you're in the B2B sales environment uh, with social. Why is that? Uh, I think that they struggle to, to find out what the most efficient use of social is because uh, if you're you're not going about it the right way. You can invest a lot of time and effort growing a network. And sure. I think people spend a lot of time and effort focusing on trying to grow a network and and they, they'll contribute, they'll follow people, um, and uh, they, they don't find the value out of that. And uh, so I, I think that there's a number of different things that people fail to pay attention to. One of them is that there's a lot of people in, in all sorts of different social channels that are holding up their hand and saying, hey, does anybody know about this or, or, or I need help with this? And I don't think that a lot of people use social as a search tool. Yep. And uh, there's a lot of business to be had out there if you do. And not, so not just from uh, B2B, like for, uh, companies like ours that are selling to other media companies, but you know, one of the things that our, our software does for a local business is helps them search for potential customers. And it's amazing the type of businesses that can find customers um, through just through social search. Uh, one example is a, a locksmith. Uh, we had a locksmith in our office when we were doing a focus group and, and couldn't figure out how this type of thing would, would help him. Uh, any type of social media would help him. And so we started conducting searches for people that have locked their keys in the car. And so Number one, not only do you find a lot of profanity uh, when you search for people that have locked <laughs> keys in the car, do. but you, have, you find a lot of opportunity of people that, are, that actually tweet and say, shit, I've locked my keys in my car. Wow. Interesting. I would yeah. never have guessed that. Yeah. Fantastic. And let me ask you this. This is one of my favorite um, 
questions to kind of help folks gather some thoughts for long-term vision. What would you say um, is most important for marketers that sit in a similar chair as yourself, Jeff, mm -hmm. um, that should be on their strategic roadmap that, but probably already is, it, but probably is not? Um, I, I would say a, a marketing automation system. And uh, marketing automation has been um, a hot topic lately. But I think that um, uh, systems that are out there have fallen short uh, in the past uh, little while for two reasons. Number one, uh, they don't connect directly to sales organizations and, and feed them in an efficient manner. And the other way is that um, the one thing that we failed on is providing relevant, valuable information. Because as you build out campaigns mm -hmm. around, you've collected a lead, say, uh, in a mar marketing platform. And we, inevitably, the content you start to get from them uh, is generic content. It's, you know, five ways that you can improve this and that. But you can't service everybody in, a, in the best possible way by providing generic content. Yep. You're, people don't want to be dripped on. But if you can serve them intelligent content that is tailored directly for them and it's about them, stuff that they don't know and that information that nobody else has, you can figure out how to do that. Um, there is a, a gold mine yep. uh, waiting to be uh, mined. The relevancy piece, yeah. right? Where they are, what they need, timing, all that. That's yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. I totally agree. Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure.